Hi everyone, it's Ms. Trapani, and I'm here to share a few excerpts from books by or about African Americans. These are all books that we have in our collection, and most of them are brand new. So please stop by the library to borrow any of the books that you hear about in this presentation. An excerpt from Dear Martin. It's like I'm trying to climb a mountain, but I've got one fool trying to shove me down so I won't be on his level and another fool tugging at my leg, trying to pull me to the ground he refuses to leave. Jared and Trey are only two people, but after today, I know that when I head to Yale next fall, because I am going there, I'm gonna be paranoid about people looking at me and wondering if I'm qualified to be there. How do I work against this, Martin? Getting real with you, I feel a little defeated. Knowing there are people who don't want me to succeed is depressing, especially coming from two directions. An excerpt from My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich. I take my hands away from my chin and rest them on my lap. Daddy, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just trying to be. The rest of the words are stuck in my throat. They're begging to come out, but they form a ball right there. They want me to cry like a big baby, so I swallow them back. Trying to be what, baby girl? I can't hold it back. It comes tumbling out of my throat, slipping out of my mouth like a meteorite. Regular and normal, I cry. I clench my fists and tighten my jaw, trying to keep it in. Ah, oh, broomstick, daddy sighs, pulling me in and holding me like I'm a big baby. You don't want to be regular. You want to be dynamite. You want to be out of sight, just not out of space. I want to be extra galactic, I say through tears. I know. I know, baby girl, he says, kissing my forehead. You need to come back down to earth, that's all. The people ain't up there in the galaxy. An excerpt from Genesis begins again. So that rolling around in milk thing was stupid. So was the baking soda experiment. And I'm embarrassed to confess that for three months straight, I'd sit with yogurt on my face for 15 minutes every night. an excerpt from For Black Girls Like Me. I am a girl, but most days I feel like a question mark. People throw their looks at me, then back at my mama, sister, and papa, who are all white as oleander. Then they look back at me, black as a midnight orchard. An excerpt from Ghost Boys. Bear witness, my tale is told. Wake, only the living can make the world better. Live and make it better. Don't let me or anyone else tell this tale again. An excerpt from Black Boy Joy. Joy is a fragile thing, my boy, and must be treated as such. Too harsh and it disintegrates rush and it disappears. So we coax it forth, feed it like kindling to a fire. An excerpt from The Crossover. In this game of life, your family is the court and the ball is your heart. No matter how good you are, no matter how down you get, always leave your heart on the court. An excerpt from Blended. Chocolate family meets vanilla family in the artificial reality that is a mall. Caramel daughter caught helplessly between the two. An excerpt from Becoming Muhammad Ali. Frank kept swinging like a lumberjack trying to knock down a tree, but I kept standing, kept sticking, kept moving like a mighty wind till the final bell rang and the judges unanimously called out my name for the win. An excerpt from Out of My Mind. Words. I'm surrounded by thousands of words, maybe millions. Cathedral, mayonnaise, pomegranate, Mississippi, Neapolitan, 
hippopotamus, silky, terrifying, iridescent, tickle, sneeze, wish, worry. Words have always swirled around me like snowflakes, each one delicate and different, each one melting untouched in my hands. Deep within me, words pile up in huge drifts, mountains of phrases and sentences and connected ideas, clever expressions, jokes, love songs. From the time I was really little, maybe just a few months old, words were like sweet liquid gifts and I drank them like lemonade. I could almost taste them. They made my jumbled thoughts and feelings have substance. My parents have always blanketed me with conversation. They chattered and babbled. They verbalized and vocalized. My father sang to me. My mother whispered her strength into my ear. Every word my parents spoke to me or about me, I absorbed and kept and remembered. All of them. I have no idea how I untangled the complicated process of words and thought, but it happened quickly and naturally. By the time I was two, all my memories had words and all my words had meanings, but only in my head. I have never spoken one single word. I am almost 11 years old. An excerpt from Long Way Down. My mother used to say, I know you're young, gotta get it out. But just remember when you're walking in the nighttime, make sure the nighttime ain't walking into you.